Hello everybody, it's Carl Bown here from Comic Culture in the Game Store in Lincoln in England and today I'm going to have a look at what's in the box for Wild Blue Yonder, the latest release from GMT Games. Uh, it's part of the Down in Flames series which has been going a long time and what they've done is they've repackaged a couple of the games but with loads of extra stuff as well. Uh, it's a really heavy solid box, lots in it. Uh, and it's a great game. I love this system. Uh, it's an ideal introductory war game for new players. But once you start playing the campaigns, you'll find there's an enormous amount of depth. So, first of all, let's have a look at the box itself. Really nice picture on the front. Uh, looks like it's uh, over the desert, maybe. Uh, that terrain looks uh, a bit mountainous, a bit deserty. Nice, pretty, uh, well done picture by Antonis Karidis. Uh, you've got the back. Okay, picture a couple of the cards there, two classics, Spitfire and ME109, description, some of the counters, uh, rates the complexity as a 4, which I think is pretty uh, solid, good call, uh, solitaire suitability is a 3, which is low, uh, you know, I think 3 is probably overrating it, it's the ideal game for a couple of people, so let's have a look what's in the box. Okay, first of all, like I say, it's quite a big box, it's quite heavy and solid. Uh, it takes a while to get the uh, the lid off. It's quite tightly packed. First of all, we've got the dogfight rule book. Now, the base of the game is dogfighting, obviously. Uh, you have cards, you have a leader and a wingman. You've got rules for how long the game goes on, what all the different things mean on the cards. Okay, jet ratings, wingman ratings, bursts, position. Now, the way the game works is that you end up with cards facing each other and depending on how they're facing each other it depends whether they're unengaged engaged or tailing okay so this guy here you can see he's at a disadvantage and this guy's at an advantage this guy here this guy's being tailed and this guy is actually tailing and that gives you certain advantages allows you to play certain cards the cards are you have a hand of cards and they all do different things so they can change your position relative to another plane they can obviously do hits you know, they can uh, swap things around. So you might be telling someone else and you might be able to play a card that allows you to tell them. But there are ways of reacting to each other. You've got altitude. Okay, there's only five altitude levels. Uh, it's not too complicated to track that. Then you've got information about firing your guns. Wingman rules. Wingmen operate differently. They support leaders. Uh, if your leader gets shot down, your wingman will become your leader. You know, destroyed aircraft. There's a nice, colourful, extended example of play. Uh, I think if you've played any of these games before, then you'll find it pretty easy to pick up. It's a really nice game. Like I say, great introductory war game for people. Then you've got the campaign rule book. Now, once you've played the, the dogfights a few times, you're going to find, okay, you know, it's fun. There's not a huge amount of depth in it. It's, it's great to try all the different aircraft and see what they can do uh, and note the differences between them. To me, the campaigns have always been the heart of this game. Uh, and this one now covers campaigns from 1940 to 1944. It gives you a lot more depth. Uh, there's a lot more interest in it because you have to decide what you're sending to each one. And there's an enormous amount of campaigns in this game. Uh, there's lots of special rules in here for the campaigns. Again, they're not complicated. Uh, you know, it's, you're not gonna struggle even if you're a fairly new war gamer, uh, but you are gonna find it a lot more interesting and you're gonna feel like you're in a proper air campaign. Uh, and then you fight the games out using the dogfight rules. So it's, it's great fun. Okay, let's have a look at the counters. Okay, you've got individually named pilots. They're all rated for different things, so they have different letters on them to say what they're good at. Obviously, you know, you've got people like Bader there, uh, Douglas Barton Barder, is it? I think Douglas Barder. Uh, German, American, Russian, British, okay. Here you've got nice, nice counters, nicely laid out, easy to read. Here you've got counters, there's your altitudes you know, what sort of formation you're in, whether you're on full throttle, damage, turns, things like that. Okay, now you've got uh, targets. Okay, so there's quite a lot of different targets available. They all seem to be upside down. But you've got things like you can have, you know, battles where you're trying to shoot a, a bomb a cruiser or bomb a battleship or bomb a seaplane base. An aircraft carrier, obviously, you know, pretty interesting trying to blow up an aircraft carrier. Bridges, cities, small cities, airfields, pretty important. Rail yards, marshalling yards, yards, etc. 
okay so lots of those it might just be that you're having a dog fight okay this tells you uh the victory points that you get if you're successful or you know unsuccessful obviously how much damage you need to do etc then you've got these cards now these are the campaigns there are i think there are four campaign cards no these must be more than that i think anyway you got kursk the Swinefoot Raids, the 8th Air Force in 1943, Battle of Britain, Battle of, uh, Battle of Berlin, sorry, Battle of Britain, Operation Pedestal. You've got a solo campaign if you want to try that out. Okay, most of the campaigns are two-player. Uh, this tells you the mission procedure. You've got the strike chart. Okay, so you can put your markers on that to follow along how you're getting on with your campaign. Uh, that's just one-sided. Resources card tells you uh, about the different things. So, you know, coordinated attack, what that represents, element tactics, okay. Here's your special missions that you can get for each one. So obviously, apart from basic missions that you're gonna get on a card, you can actually get some, some odd missions. Stalingrad aircraft, aircrew selection table. So, you know, who's in your aircrew, which plane are they flying, things like that. Okay, lots of stuff in there. Oh, yeah, I thought there were more. Here's some more campaigns. I've managed to get them mixed up. Rommel Attacks, Malta, Operation Barbarossa, Stalingrad Airlift, Malta 41-42, and into Egypt in 42. Loads of different stuff. Okay, with each campaign, you're going to get a log. Okay, so you get campaign logs in here. Uh, you can photocopy these if you want to. Uh, obviously, I don't like marking the originals up, so, it's, so if you've got a printer, you can just print copies out. I'm sure you can just download them off the internet. I'm just going to tear this open, because, again, there's a lot of stuff in this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. So there's some campaign logs for Berlin. There's Operation Pedestal. There's land campaign logs. Okay, Stalingrad airlift campaign logs. These are all double-sided as well. Okay, lots and lots of stuff in here. And it weighs quite a bit. Okay, the next thing you get is the cards. Obviously, these are the meat of the game. Uh, I like a game with a nice insert, okay? Uh, I've not actually tried these, obviously, because I've not earned them yet. I've not tried the cards, whether they'll fit in sleeves in there. But these, the, the aircraft cards don't get shuffled or anything. These cards will get shuffled. Uh, these might need sleeving up, depending on how often you play. I certainly have played my original copies quite a lot. There's a typical card that you might want to play. It's an attack card. You can improve your position by two, by exactly two or gain two extra bursts against a wingman or a formation aircraft. So you can use that card in two different ways. Okay, There are two decks in this one. There's one for each side, so you don't have to worry about your opponent's going to get all the good cards. And these are the aircraft cards. Four stacks like that. I mean, that's quite a solid amount of different aircraft. They're all double-sided because once they take damage, they flip over. Got to love a game with Lancasters in it. Uh, you know, I'd be disappointed if Lancasters weren't in there. It's one of the things that... Uh, that I was really looking forward to living in Lincolnshire and my father-in-law worked on Lancasters during World War II so you know pretty special to me uh, but of course you've got hurricanes okay you've got Italian aircraft you've got French aircraft you've got German aircraft you've got Russian aircraft you've got everything that you can think of that might go between 1940 and 1944 okay haven't played this yet obviously but I've played the system many 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 times absolutely love it I think if you're interested in aircraft and you're looking for a game to play, you know, like I say, maybe with a new gamer and you want to get them interested, this is an ideal start. But then, you know, you're going to get a lot of play out of this game. If you love aircraft, you're going to get huge amounts out of this game and I think you'll really enjoy it. Okay, hope you've enjoyed seeing what's in the box. I'm struggling to get it all back in again because there's so much of it. Uh, big heavy game, lots of fun. I think you, you know, like I say, if you like planes, you'll really love it. Okay, thanks for uh, watching this with me. Uh, don't forget, if you've enjoyed it, to click like on YouTube and subscribe, and uh, I'll try and do more of the same. Thanks very much. This is Carl Bound from Comic Culture and the Game Store saying goodbye. Bye.